So if you haven't taken your pledge yet, or if you're unsure of how you're going to do it, set your faith, set your expectation, take the pledge, and put it in God's hands.
just worship the Lord for a moment? Hallelujah, Lord, we just lift your name up. We worship and we adore you, oh God. We worship and we adore you, oh Father. Hallelujah, we just lift your name up this morning, Father. We give you all the praise and the glory because you're worthy of it, God. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you this morning, God. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Father. Hallelujah, we lift your name up this morning, Father. Hallelujah, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same sun, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And we will honor you, God. We will lift your name up, God. We will magnify you, Lord. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We give you the praise, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No rock will have to cry out for me, God. Hallelujah. I will give you the praise because you're worthy. Hallelujah. I will worship you, God. I honor you, God. I adore you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory to your name, Jesus. I thank you. Day that you made, and we will rejoice, and we'll be glad in it, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you the praise because you're worthy. There's nobody like you. Oh, God, there's nobody like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, Abundant Life Church International. We welcome you to our Sunday morning service. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. On behalf of Apostle Kirk Patrick and Lady Kim, we welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. To our online viewing audience, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Our Facebook family, our YouTube family, good morning. We'd like to ask you to take a minute, hit like, hit share. Make sure you have on your subscribe, turn on your notifications because... You don't want to miss anything. Amen? And then lastly, we'd like to ask you to go and grab at least five people to come and join with you today because today's word is going to be life-changing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, here at Abundant Life, we believe in confessing and decreeing the word of God. So this morning, if you would join with me as we make some declarations from the word over our life. Amen? Amen. So oh, please repeat after me. The Lord has made me the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I will not be sad or depressed because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm blessed coming in. And I'm blessed going out. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God has not given me a spirit of fear. I have a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. God is with me. He strengthens me. And he helps me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I am a new creature in Christ. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. I'm delivered from the power of darkness. Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. The Spirit of God dwells in me. God's power is great in me. Every tongue that speaks against me in judgment shall be condemned. I live under God's supernatural protection. And if God is for me, who can be against me? Nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. I can cast all of my cares 
on him because he cares for me. The Lord has great plans for me. He has begun a good work in me and he will perform it until the day of Christ. I am anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, I let my request be made known to God. I walk by faith and not by sight. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding guides my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm a giver. I give and I receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'm a lender and not a borrower. I sow bountifully and I reap bountifully. I do not lack. God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He takes pleasure in my prosperity. I trust the Lord with all my heart. I acknowledge him in all of my ways. I have a spirit of wisdom. The eyes of my understanding are being enlightened. The Lord is perfecting everything which concerns me. I'm not conformed to this world, but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind with the word of God. I have world overcoming faith on the inside of me. The peace of God rules my heart. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. All things work together for my good because I love the Lord and I am called according to his purpose. I'm more than a conqueror through him who loves me. I've been made holy. I've been made righteous. Jesus loves me with an everlasting love. There is nothing too hard for my God and with him all things are possible. The Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think. I will seek the Lord at all times and in every situation. I choose to believe what the Lord says. I am who God says that I am. I can do whatever the Lord said I can do. And I can have whatever the Lord said I can have. I will not be shaken. And I will not lose hope. Because my trust is in God. Hallelujah. Give him some praise for that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. This is a great place to put your praise. This is a great place to put your worship. God, we honor you. We thank you. We magnify you. We bless you. We praise you. We lift you high. your name. We bless your name, Jesus. We magnify you. Everybody thankful for who he is. Hallelujah. Thank you for being the God of just. Thank you for being the God of favor. And we receive 
just shout it out loud. Say, I am free. Say it out loud. Say, I am free. Hallelujah. We're stepping into the joy. We're stepping into the season of favor. We're stepping into the season of goodness. Hallelujah. Feel free to put your hands together like this for the Lord.
again to Abundant Life Church International. If you're just joining us, if you're just tuning in online, welcome. And we thank you so much on behalf of Apostle Kirkpatrick and Lady Kim. We thank you for joining us. Amen. At this time, we would like to recognize any first time guest. Is there anyone visiting with us for the very first time? If you are, just wave your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone else? Just wave your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our ushers are coming around with first-time visitors packets. That's what they're giving you. There's a couple of things there. There's something that lets you know a little more about who we are. And then also there is a Let's Connect card that we would like to ask you to fill out. And you can drop that in the offering bucket or you can give it to an usher as you leave. Amen. Let's give them one more hand. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Glory to God. Well, at this time, we're going to get ready to receive our morning announcements. Let's welcome Sister Trayona as she comes. Good morning, Abundant Life. Join us this evening for a night of healing and worship at 7 o'clock p.m. here at ALCI. Come with an expectation of the manifestation of miracles, signs, and wonders. And don't come alone. Bring someone who needs to receive healing, whether spiritual, physical, emotional, financial, whatever the need, nothing is impossible with God. A night of healing and worship at 7 p.m. tonight here at Abundant Life Church International. ALCI's Monday corporate prayer call is tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. The call-in number is on our screen. Otherwise, check your inbox or go to our website at www.edwardkirkpatrick.org for the call-in number. Again, Monday corporate prayer call at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow evening. ALCI's interactive Bible study is each Tuesday evening at 7.15 p.m. We thank all of our ALCI family and friends for sending in topics and related questions with which makes our Tuesday Bible study truly interactive. Continue to send in those topics that you would like Apostle Kirkpatrick to address along with any related questions and or prayer requests to pastor at edwardkirkpatrick.org. Again, that's pastor at edwardkirkpatrick.org. We look forward to seeing you all Tuesday in Sanctuary at 7.15 p.m. ALCI's In Sanctuary Corporate Prayer is each Wednesday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. So plan to join the church body for one hour of powerful prayer on this Wednesday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. Ladies, fun and fellowship continues with Lady Kim. Mark your calendar for Friday, June 2nd for movie night at ALCI. That's 560 Farragut Street here. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. for Chat and Chew and movie starts at 7.30 p.m. Again, Fun and Fellowship with Lady Kim on Friday, June 2nd, here at Abundant Life Church International. 
Be sure to stop by our product store to take advantage of the many ministry teachings, teachings available for your spiritual enrichment and edification. Today's message will be available as well. If you can't stop by, you can always download Apostle Kirkpatrick's messages from our online product store at edwardkirkpatrick.org. This concludes our highlighted announcements for this morning. We will now have an additional announcement by Minister Fryer. Grace and peace, Abundant Life Church International family and friends. I have a, an, ex, an exciting uh, announcement that I want to make. Uh, July of this year, Apostle Edward Kirkpatrick will celebrate 25 years of ministering the Word of God. Ah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us continue to praise and thanks God, thank God for the ministry gifts of Apostle Edward Kirkpatrick and Lady Kim Kirkpatrick the overseers of Abundant Life Church International, Greensboro, North Carolina, and Abundant Life Church International in Knoxville, Tennessee. During, during these 25 years, God has touched and brought, uh, and brought uh, transformation to the lives of, of the people of, of this local church and to hundreds of thousands of people throughout social media and uh, through book sales, through CD sales, and throughout the world. In my 19 years as a member of ALCI, my wife and I have witnessed and experienced the gift of the Holy Spirit operating through Apostle Kirkpatrick. I believe that all of us can testify that God has used the ministry of Apostle Kirkpatrick to impact and touch our lives, both spiritually and naturally. Truly, Apostle Kirkpatrick has shown to be a man of God, a man after God's own heart, Hallelujah. A man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. Glory. The man of God has labored before the Lord for us. I would like to submit to you some ways in which God has supported. And I apologize. I would like to uh, submit to you some ways in which he has supported and helped navigate God's people through the, through the twists and turns of life. Perhaps you know someone or maybe you have been a recipient of the labor of love. A special wedding a hospital visit after hours a baby dedication his own monetary seed sown into your life loving us through the loss of a loved one a special counseling session praying the prayer of salvation with someone celebrating our family achievements just to name a few 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 through 13. I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible. And now, friends, we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. To honor Apostle Kirkpatrick and Lady Kim Kirkpatrick, we are asking every member, partner, and friend to join us as a corporate body in sowing a financial honor seed into their lives that is good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over we have three levels of pledges in which you can participate one level is a platinum level which is five hundred dollars or more the second level is a gold level which is three hundred dollars or more the third level is uh civil level which is hundred fifty dollars or more next Sunday pledge cards will be provided for you to use to put your honest seed in no seed is too small we want everyone to have an opportunity to sow an honor seed into the lives of our leaders let's make this 25th year anniversary the best celebration Apostle Edward Kirkpatrick and Lady Kim have ever experienced once again let's give God some praise Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give God some praise for our leaders. We thank you, God. We bless your name. Hallelujah. And we release that seed into their life by faith. And greet Jesus' name. I appreciate you. I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anyone that's grateful for God's grace? Grateful for God's mercy? for his love, for his kindness. Truth be told, if we were honest about it, he loves us in spite of us. <laughs> 
in spite of our flaws, we're still, he's still worthy. Hallelujah. So God, we just take this moment to lift our hands and to offer you praise. We take this moment to offer you the fruit of our lips this morning. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy that goes hand in hand. Thank you that you give life to us. So with every breath that is within us, every breath that we breathe in, any time that we inhale, we will exhale praise. We will praise you because you are great. Can you just say that softly? Say, God, you are great. God, you are wonderful.
your breath. You are, you are. Mm. Yeah. Is your breath, is your breath. How many know it's his breath in our lungs? And the Bible says, let everything that has breath. Now the reason he says and commands that everything that has breath ought to praise him is because he is the supplier of the breath. So would you take a moment and just open up your mouth and release a praise to the one who gave you breath today. Come on, come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and give praise to the one who has given you breath. Has given you breath. He's given you breath. And because he's given you breath, we worship him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you take your seat, if you don't mind, just look over at your neighbor to the left and right and just tell him these words. Tell him the Lord has been good to me. Now turn to somebody else and say, and he's been good to you too. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. Again, we'd like to welcome each of you here, and we're grateful for your presence to all of our guests. Amen. Let's give all of our guests another hand. Let's thank them for being a part of our worship service today. Today is the first Sunday of the month. This is the Sunday that we observe and we receive communion. And so hopefully when you came in this morning, you received communion elements. But just in case you did not, please raise your hand so that our ushers can serve you because we want you to partake along with us as we prepare to receive communion on this morning. We understand that communion is a very, very important and vital part of the Christian life. Adam and Eve ate their way into the curse and with it sickness and stress, distress and pain and death came as a result. But the good news is you and I now we have the opportunity to partake of the tree of life. Whenever we partake of the Lord's Supper we are eating our way into health and wholeness. Hallelujah. You know when Adam and Eve sinned, their hearts became cold with fear. They hid themselves when they heard the voice of God in the garden. Over in Genesis chapter 3 verse 10, they heard the voice of God and ran in fear. But as the resurrected Christ walked with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, their hearts burned with love for Jesus. They wanted to stay longer in his presence. The good news is the Lord Jesus through his death, burial, and resurrection, he has restored the relationship with God that was fractured and lost when Adam and Eve fell. And today we don't ever have to be afraid of God's voice. Whatever challenges come our way, we can have confidence that he is for us according to Romans 8.31. And we can come boldly to his throne of grace without the sense of inferiority or insecurity. Today, each time you and I receive and break the bread, which is his body, we can have a fresh revelation. Our eyes can be opened to see Jesus, to know him in a way we've never known him before. The Bible says that he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He himself did this. This is what communion is about. It's about us remembering what he himself has done 
I love the word himself because it implies that he thought about healing to be too important and to put it into the hands of an angel. He said, I'm going to do this myself. I want to bear the sins and the diseases of my people because this is how much he loved us. He didn't have to suffer for us. He didn't have to take your place and my place on the cross, but he did. He died not because of something he had done. He died because of what we did. He became sick with our sickness, with our diseases. And today we can be made whole through his sacrifice. As you prepare to receive his body. I want you to do so with these things in mind. Number one, I want you to do so with this in mind that Jesus has already paid the price for your health and wholeness. There's nothing else you have to do. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to qualify for it. You don't have to do good works. No, all you have to do is believe and receive. Isn't that amazing? That Jesus has already suffered so we wouldn't have to suffer. That he has already bore our sins in his body so that we wouldn't have to suffer the consequences of sin no longer. So today as you take the bread, which is the body of Christ, I want you to take it and make this declaration after me. And as you do this, I want you to remember Jesus. Don't think of your sickness. Don't think of the challenges that you're facing. Don't even think about healing. Just think of Jesus. Just see Jesus who has paid the ultimate price for you to have life and have it more abundantly. Father, today we thank you that you have suffered in our place and bore our sins and our sicknesses in your body. Today we come and we are thankful for what you have already purchased through your body on our behalf. We thank you for the stripes that fell upon your back because with those stripes we are healed we thank you Lord that sickness and disease has no right to dwell in our bodies and we thank you that by your stripes we are healthy whole and strong in Jesus name let us do this in his remembrance thank you Lord Jesus thank you for health Thank you for life. Thank you for strength. And the same night Jesus was betrayed, he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood. This blood that was shed for you. Why did his blood, why did he shed his blood? He shed his blood so that your sins can be forgiven. He died and shed his blood so that you and I could be made righteous. What does that mean? That means we could stand justified without the sense of guilt, without the sense of shame. See, people who are Christians, that are believers, who are still walking around with a guilt complex and feeling ashamed and feeling condemned, they don't understand the power of the blood. The Bible says, when you remember the blood, there is no more consciousness of sin. When you become blood conscious, you are no longer conscious of your sin. You are only conscious of your righteousness. What he has done for you on your behalf. Glory to God. Say, I've been made righteous. Say, I stand before God. Fully acquitted. No longer guilty. His blood has expunged my record. Wiped my record clean. Today. I stand just as clean as Adam did before sin entered the garden. Thank you, Father, that by your blood, my sins, they are forgiven. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Let us receive his blood together. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank God for his body and for his blood. Thank you, Lord. Can we give God praise? Yes. Woo! 
I'm justified by the blood. I'm made righteous by that blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be his holy name. Mm. Thank you, Father. Well, I am excited because it is opportunity for prosperity time. To our guests that are here, we call giving time an opportunity for prosperity time because whenever you have an opportunity to give to the Lord's work, you have an opportunity to experience God's abundance in every area of your life. One of the things we teach and we believe based on scripture is that giving is not about money. It's about your heart condition. The only reason that God asks us and requires of us to give is so that our hearts can be transformed. Amen. Because the Bible says that where a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. Your heart can never be in the kingdom if your treasure is not there. It doesn't matter what you say. I don't care how much you say you love God and you love his kingdom. If your treasure is not placed in it, then your actions contradict your testimony. Because the Bible makes it clear that wherever my treasure is, that's where my heart's going to be. One of the things about giving, giving transforms the heart. Yes, it transforms the heart. It causes you to move out of selfishness into generosity. And how many know that when you are a generous person, when you learn how to give, and you don't give with the motive of trying to get something. See, that's the problem with many people. They, they only give if something is coming back in return. Well, I'm going to do good for you if you do good to me. No, your heart ought to be, Lord, I love you. And because you've given to me, I give to you. I don't need anybody to convince me to give. I don't need a pep rally. Come on, somebody. No, when you look over your life and the fact that you've got life and health and strength and you've got your right mind and you've got your ability to get up and go to work and do the things you do, that enough ought to be enough to say, you know what, I'm going to give to God. I'm giving because he's already given to me. If he doesn't give me anything else, the fact that I'm saved, that's enough. But the good news is he always does give you more than what you give him. That's the law of seed time and harvest. Farmer can't go out and just plant a seed and get that one seed back. No, it's coming back, pressed down, shaking together and running over. And that's the beauty of giving to God with the right heart. When you give to God with the right heart, he always gives back to you more than what you give to him. I've discovered over my 30 years of, 30 plus years of being a born again believer, that you can never out give God. You can never out give God. Because the more you give to God, the more he gives back to you. And the reason he does that is so you can continue to be a blessing to others and to the work of the kingdom. So today as you prepare your hearts and minds to give, I want you to give. Understanding that your giving never leads you to loss. It always leads you to profit. And I want you to make this declaration after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, because I'm a cheerful giver and I give willingly with the right motives I'm blessed every seed that I sow they don't leave my life they just go into my future and the next time I see them they will be pressed down shaken together and running over thank you Lord for the privilege to give I live to give and I love to give in Jesus name Amen. Come on, let's give you in the hands of the ushers at this time.
that we are not consumed Holy Spirit of God we are so appreciative of your presence your partnership your friendship we welcome you here today and we give you the right of way we yield everything that we do and say to you you take complete control we thank you that your presence is here to heal to bless to empower to transform, to save, to deliver, and to make whole. It is not by might, it is not by power, it is by your spirit, says the Lord. Open our ears, Lord, so that we might hear your voice. Open our eyes, that we might see your wonders at work. We give you glory now. Thank you for revelation light. Thank you for insight. Thank you for giving us the ability to comprehend what we're about to share. Thank you that people will leave this place empowered by the presence of a revelation that will propel their lives to new levels. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated in his presence. To God 
be the glory. Come on, Christina, you're leaving and you're the singer. I'm not the singer, I'm the teacher. To God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the things He has done. Sing that again. To God. To God be the glory. you to turn to the book of Acts chapter number one. Oh, today I want you to listen with anointed ears because today we're going to share with you a revelation from the word that has the potential to catapult you to new levels of spiritual authority. Today I'm going to speak from this thought, the conditions for spiritual power. When you understand what spiritual power is, you'll have a greater appreciation for what we're about to convey. Now when we think of the word power, here's what I want you to have come to your mind. The power of God refers to the ability and capability of God. The ability and capability of God. This power that we're referring to, when you know God's power, you do not underestimate his ability. In other words, no matter what problems or situations or circumstances you encounter, you understand that there is nothing too hard for God. There is no problem, there is no situation that God cannot fix. I decree and prophesy that every irreversible issue in your life is about to be reversed. Amen. 
God is the unchanging changer. Luke one thirty seven says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what it looks like. There is nothing impossible with God. He's the greatest power. He is the greatest power. In Acts chapter number 1, verse 8, Jesus is speaking and he says, But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts 10 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So we see the Holy Ghost and power go together. You can't receive the Holy Ghost and not receive power. You can't receive power and not have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Today I'm not talking about political power. I'm talking about spiritual power. I'm not talking about economic power. I'm talking about spiritual power. And today we're going to see how we enter into it. Now, before we get there, I want to establish for us what are some of the things that power imparts to us. Now, I want to make extremely clear on the onset that this power that I'm referring to has not been reserved just for those in the fivefold ministry. In other words, it's not just for the apostle and the prophet and the evangelist and the teacher and the pastor. No, this power is for every born again child of God. You have a right to walk in power. Say, I have a right to have power. Now, this power that I'm referring to is God's ability to affect change. When power is manifest in your life, it can change a dead relationship. When power is manifest in your life, it can cause a sickness that the doctor said is incurable to be cured. When this power shows up in your life, it can take a man who's been addicted to drugs and have gone to treatment centers with no avail. That power can set him free in an instant. I'm talking about the power to bring change in a moment's time. Hallelujah. The power of God, it imparts to us, number one, write this down, the capacity to prevail over the forces of life. The power to prevail over the forces of life. Now one of the things you must understand, and if you don't understand this, you'll, your life will be a constant struggle. And that is before a person can make progress, forces must be overcome. Before a person can make progress, forces must be overcome. In order to attain victory and remain victorious, it requires power. You will never ever achieve victory apart from the power of God. The difference between travailing and prevailing in life is power. See, you got a decision to make. Are you going to go through life travailing or are you going to go through life prevailing? Well, the difference between the two is power. Power determines whether or not you travail or prevail in life. Look at this in Genesis chapter number 32. Genesis chapter 32. The moment you encounter power, you will have a change of story. God is about to change your story. He's about to rewrite the script. You're going from victim to victor. You're going from sick to healed. You're going from broke to prosperous. You're going from cursed to blessed. You're going from last place to first place. You're going from the bottom to the top. You're going from sorrow to joy. You're going from confusion to peace. Am I talking to anybody in here? 
God is getting ready to flip some stuff in your life because when you encounter power, change is inevitable. I said change is what? Inevitable. Get ready for a change. I feel a change coming on. I feel a change coming on. Somebody's getting ready to go from jobless to many opportunities for a job. Glory be to God. I'll say that, Lord. You're getting ready to go from middle class to Jesus class. I'm telling you. When you step into Jesus class, it's beyond, it's beyond first class. It's, it's a class all by itself. Am I teaching to anybody in here? Genesis 32 verse 28 the Bible says and he said thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel now notice why his name was changed notice why his destiny was turned around for as a prince has thou power with God and men and has prevailed when you encounter power you will prevail God will change your story he will change your status. Notice Jacob prevailed because he encountered power. Turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. The Bible says in verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Talking about David. He anointed him. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward the spirit of the Lord came upon David now when you read that you might just think okay what's the big deal the spirit came upon David what what you've got to understand is the spirit always brings with him power so we could literally read this verse from this perspective and the power of the Lord came upon David from that day forward I want you to see what happened with this great power that was in his life. Turn over now to 1 Samuel chapter number 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. So now we see in 1 Samuel 16, the spirit came on him. Hallelujah. The power came on him. And something's getting ready to happen in his life. Are you with me? Look what it says in verse number 49. 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 49. The Bible says here in verse 49, And David put his hand in his bag and took the, thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Verse 50, So David prevailed. So David did what? prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him but there was no sword in the hand of David he did it without a sword I, I just heard the Lord say so I just heard this man I'm about to run right now when power hits your life you don't take the conventional route to get victory some of you are getting ready to prevail by unconventional means you're not going to do what everybody else has done in order to get what everybody else has gotten, but you're going to do something that nobody's done before, and they're going to say, how in the world did you do that? You're going to say, power. Power. And David prevailed. How did he prevail? The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Power came upon him. When there is power in your life, you go from travail to prevailing. May I pronounce to you by the Spirit of God, your days of travailing are over. You're getting ready to go from tears to cheers. From sorrow to singing. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. See, before a person can make progress, forces must be overcome. The reason people think, oh, I don't understand why it is I can't move forward. It just seems like every time I take one step forward, I'm taking ten steps backwards. See, that there are forces that are tying down your destiny. There are forces that you can't see with your physical eye. You, you think it's the things you see that's preventing you from going and having and doing what God has called. No, it's stuff you cannot see. It's invisible enemies that you cannot see that are 
They are opposing you. They are literally keeping you stagnated and frustrated. But by the power of God, I decree your liberation today. I decree you are going forward today and you are about to experience a change of story. You will prevail. Somebody shout, I will prevail. Oh, glory. Are you catching this? I said, are you catching this? Glory to God. Now, the difference, again, between travailing and prevailing through life is power. It takes power to win the battles of life. You cannot win the battles of life without the power of God. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. You cannot prevail in your own strength. You cannot win in your own wisdom. You need power. See, the enemy has made many in the church a laughing stock because we have the form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. There is power that comes with godliness. I don't care how godly you claim to be, I want to see power because power, it, 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 it authenticates, it validates, it confirms power. The devil's not respecting nothing but power. He don't care nothing about your position. He don't care nothing about your title. Psalm 66 and verse 3 says, How terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. Notice that enemies only submit to power. In order not to end as a victim, you need power. In order not to end as a victim, you need power. Many have become victims because they don't have power. They love God. They're sincere. They go to church. They pay their tithe. They do all of the Christian things, but yet they're victims. They're victims. They're victims to sickness. Victims to depression. Victims to fear. Victims. Victims to failure. Praying. Doing all of these things, but don't understand what I'm teaching today. One visitation of power will change everything for you. When power shows up, every devil has to take flight. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Mm. So number one, you need power because power imparts to you the capacity to prevail. Number two, you need power because power gives you the capacity to overcome resistance and take delivery of your possessions. I'll say that again. Power gives you the capacity to overcome resistance and take delivery of your possessions. How many know there are some things that have been allotted you because of your born again status? Because you are now born again. You are now child of God. You have rights and privileges as a child of God. You are an heir with God and a joint heir with Christ. But there are certain things you will never possess apart from power. Because power gives you the ability to take possession of your possessions. Oh, glory. Too many of us have been living beneath our privileges. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says, Behold, I give you power to get wealth. Notice it takes power to get wealth. You can't even get it without the power of God. You've been chasing the money when you should have been chasing the power. Oh, I'm getting ready to get in trouble. You, you've been chasing the job when you should have been chasing the power. You've been chasing the career when you should have been chasing the power. You've been chasing the house and the car and all the stuff when you should have been chasing the power. Listen, when you got power, the stuff will chase you. You don't have to go looking for stuff because the power will bring the stuff to you. Power would do it. The apostles operated in power. 
They didn't have time to go looking for money. The money looked for them. They brought it and laid it at their feet. And they didn't even ask for it. Somebody's getting ready to walk in power to such a degree that you're not going to have to ask for anything. You're just going to think things and it's going to show up. You're just going to say, man, I, you know, it would be good to have that. And all of a sudden, somebody's going to call you and say, I was thinking about you and the Lord told me to bless you with this. Oh, my God. I wish I had some people in this room who believe that the power of God can produce wealth in your life. The power of God can produce change in your life. I see some of you looking at me all funny, talking about what I need that for. See, if you don't understand what you need it for, you ain't even ready for it. If you got to ask that, you, ain't, you don't even qualify. I know what I need it for because there are people I got to help. And there, come on, somebody. There are lives I got to empower. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I've got to advance the kingdom. I got to help get this gospel to the nations of the world. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This is bigger than you. In fact, he tells us why in Deuteronomy 8, 18. Keep reading the verse. He said, behold, I give you power to get well so that I can establish my covenant. The covenant is on the line. I'm covenant minded. That's why I'm thinking about power. And the church said, amen. All right, let's look at some scriptures here. Go to Joshua chapter 17. Oh, somebody's about to possess their possessions. You're about to get a hold of what's been held up. Did you hear what I said? I said, you're about to get a hold of what's been held up. How many of you know there's some stuff the enemy has held up and held back and head held down? But I'm telling you right now, everything that's been held down, held back, amen, from you is getting ready to be released. It's getting ready to be released. It's getting ready to be released. The power of God is getting ready. In fact, before the week is out, somebody's going to have a testimony that something was held up. And it has just been released. Watch what the Lord is going to do. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I spoke the word to a man the other day. He came and he said, man, I tell you, it's been hard. Business has slowed down. Stuff ain't working. And it seemed like stuff a little tight. I just looked at him and said, it's turned around now in Jesus' name. Didn't pray for the man. Didn't offer no prayer. Just said, it's turned around and turned my way. And he called me a few days later and said, guess what? I said, what? He said, I've gotten four or five calls and I got work now that's going to keep me busy. And my business just picked up overnight. Listen, when you know that you know that you know that power is in you and that when you speak things gotta turn around somebody's getting ready to experience a change of story oh glory okay Lord I'll do it cause you told me to do it I know it may sound strange but those who believe it and receive it the Bible said amen that if you believe in the prophet you'll prosper how many of you believe I'm God's mouthpiece today well I dare you to do this stand on your feet and just turn around one time and say it just turned it just turned just, just one time and say it just turned it just turned I don't know what it is but I'm telling you right now it just turned oh ho, ho, ho. Woo, rabba it just turned That medical report just turned. That credit report just turned. That issue in your life just turned. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Well, if you really believe it, you ought not just be standing there. You ought to be praising the God who just turned it. I didn't do it. I don't have the power to turn nothing. But the power of God is in me. And I'm telling you, it just turned. Woo! My God, let me calm myself down. I'm, 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 I don't preach myself happy. I'm getting too excited. I'm getting too excited. I'm getting too excited. You know why I'm excited? Because somebody getting ready to come back with a testimony. Somebody getting ready to come back with a testimony. Woo. Glory to God. It just turned. Take your seat. Take your seat. Shoo. I see somebody in the living room shouting. I see somebody in the bedroom shouting right now, watching online, saying it just turned. I'm telling you, it just turned. Hallelujah. 
God has just turned it around. I said, God has just turned it around. Oh, glory. How many of you believe it just turned in your favor just like that? Joshua chapter 17. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Lord, if you don't get nothing else out of this service, you ought to leave saying it just turned for me, man. Somebody said, you went to church today. What, what you get out of the church service today? What you learn? What the preacher preach? You ought to just tell them, well, I don't know what the preacher preached, but I know what the Lord said. The Lord said it just turned. It don't even matter what the preacher said. I got a word from the Lord. And the Lord said it's just turned in my favor. Oh, glory, it just turned. Look, look at this in the Amplified. <clears throat> he said the hill country is not enough for us oh lord that should be your mentality what i got is not enough he said this ain't enough for us how many know that he was saying there's more i got more there's there's an inheritance that i hadn't received fully yet and all the canaanites who dwell in the valley have iron chariots he said they got they got they got rose royces over there you know, that's the people in the world, see? You, you got to understand the Canaanites. The Canaanites were the people who didn't even believe. Oh, Lord, I, I wish I had time to really teach that. Isn't it amazing how we come to church shouting, hooping, and hollering, and yet the people in the world, they, they driving our cars and living in our homes and, and, and enjoying the things we should have, and all we're doing is sitting around talking about praise the Lord. One day, when I get to heaven in the sweet by and by, when the morning comes. No, there's some stuff you need right now in the earth. Why are you waiting to get to heaven before you enjoy the best that God has? He said, this ain't enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 17, And Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim, and to Manasseh, You are a great and numerous people and have great power. Notice they were living in not enough, but they had great power. I'm going to get out of here. They had, they had great power, but they didn't have enough. That sounds like some of us. Don't it? He said, but you, look what he says in the last part of that verse. He said, you shall not have only one lot. He said, you ain't going to have just one. Oh, my God. He said, you're not just going to have one. You're going to get everything that belongs to you. I dare you to say this in faith. Say, I'm going to have more than I've ever had before. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs eleven sixteen says strong men retain riches. It's strong men, not weak men, strong men. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. There are some things you got to take by force. You can't be passive sitting back talking about you waiting on God, and when God gets ready, he's going to do it. No, he's been ready. He's been waiting on you. God doesn't have to get ready. He stay ready. He's already done his part. You got to do your part. You got to use the power that he's given you, amen, to force the release of your destiny. It takes power to take what is yours. Say, it takes power to take what is mine. Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. Look at Joshua chap chapter number 19. Joshua chapter 19. Glory be to God. The power of God gives you the capacity to overcome resistance. See, there's always going to be re resistance on your path to destiny. I said there's always going to be resistance on your path to destiny. See, the enemy is not going to just roll out the red carpet and let you freelance into your possessions. No, there are going to be giants that is going to try to oppose your entrance into your promised land. But don't worry about the giants. You got the power. Look at your neighbor and say, don't worry about the giants. You, you got the power. Oh, glory to God. You got the power. You got the power. You got the power. The Bible said in verse 47, And the coast of the children of Dan went out too little for them. Therefore the children of Dan went up to fight against Lashem and took it and smote it. He went up and took it. Took it. Took it. That's a key word. <laughs> took it. 
Lord have mercy. I, I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to take some stuff. Look at, yeah, Lord have mercy. I'm getting ready to take some stuff. I'm gonna, listen, you ought to take your joy, my God. Quit begging for joy and pleading and asking God, oh God, heal me. Take your healing, glory to God. God's not the one holding you in hostage to sickness. It's the devil, and you got to take it from him. You got to take your peace is in the hands of the enemy, not in the hands of God. God has already given you peace. He's already given you healing. He's already given you favor. You got to take it. The Bible said he took it and smote it with the edge of the sword and possessed it. Do you see that? He took it and he possessed it and dwelt therein. And called Lashem Dam after the name of Dan, their father. Hallelujah. Then he said in verse 48, This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities, and, he says, and their villages, or with their villages. Do you see this? Powerlessness makes the devil to cheat you out of your destiny. Powerlessness makes you one live below their rights as a child of God. When you lack power, you will live beneath God's best. Did you hear me? Oh, yes, you will. Many things are not in your hands now, not because God has not released them, but because there are forces resisting them from entering into your hands. There are forces resisting certain things that God has already released into your hands. God has released it. But it's not in your hands because there are forces that have to be overcome. See, what is yours doesn't come because you deserve it. What is yours doesn't come because you deserve it. What is yours only comes because you demand it. I deserve this. I've been faithful. I've been a good person. I got a good heart. <laughs> and the devil's laughing at you. And he said, you don't understand. You don't get what you deserve. You get what you demand. And as long as you don't use your authority, he's going to keep holding back what rightfully belongs to you. Hallelujah. You need to get the 8 o'clock service because I went into a piece that I'm not going to deal with now because of the time, the time that I have. I want to move uh, to some other stuff. But I showed them this morning about authority and understanding that as a child of God, you share supreme authority with the head of the church, Jesus Christ. And you got a right to command and be obeyed. Oh, glory. So let's go to the third one. So number one, we said power does what? It delivers to you the, the capacity, the capacity to do what? To prevail over the forces of life. Number two, it gives you the capacity, number two, to overcome resistance and take delivery of your possession. That's why you need power. And then here's the third thing that power does. Power gives you the capacity to fulfill your mandate and your purpose in life. You'll never fulfill your purpose in life without power. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, we see because of the anointing that came, amen, on the man of God, he became a captain. He became a captain. Samuel took the vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has made thee the Lord has anointed thee, rather, to be captain over his inheritance. See, when you are anointed by the Spirit of God, you become a captain. You become, you, you are in charge. A captain is in charge. Amen. Hallelujah. Micah 3 and 8 says, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment. And of might, notice for what purpose? To declare unto Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sin. You see that? See, when you have power, you're able to function in purpose. I'll say that again. When you have power, you're able to function in purpose. If you lack power, you will lack the ability to do what God has called you to do. You need the power to fulfill your mandate. God has given you a purpose. He's given you a mandate. It may not be a purpose to be in the pulpit. See, most people think power is only needed for the pulpit. No! You need power to be an engineer. You need power to be an electrician. 
You need power to be a businessman or businesswoman, to be a nurse or a doctor. Whatever God has called you, a school teacher, whatever he's called you to be and do, you need power to fulfill that mandate. Power is not reserved for somebody with a title just because they have a title as a minister, an evangelist, an apostle, a prophet, or, or something like that. No, you need power. Listen, there are everyday housewives raising the dead that apostles and prophets ain't even doing. Your title don't qualify you for power. Most people are hungry for power. For position rather. Hungry for position. They want position. Give me the position because I want to look certain. I want to look a certain way. I don't care nothing about no title. My wife will tell you. My God, it took, it literally, I was fighting and screaming, kicking and bawling. I didn't want no title. I'm content because the title don't make me. People get offended if you don't call them by their title. Y'all looking at me funny. You know it. I walked up to a guy. I didn't even know the man was a bishop. I thought he was still an elder. I said, how you doing, elder such and so? He said, I'm a bishop now. I said, excuse me, bishop. His eminence. When you stand before God and you enter into heaven, he's not going to say, well done, thou good and faithful apostle. Well done, thy good and faithful bishop. Well done, thy good and faithful evangelist or minister or whoever you are. He's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Because that's what you are. You're a servant. That's what I am. I'm a servant to the day I die. I'd rather people, if Jesus don't come and if I have to go by way of the grave, you walk past the cat and say, here lies a servant of the Lord. He served the Lord and was faithful to the end. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The capacity to become all that God wants you to become and reach what God wants you to reach requires power. You need power to be positioned in your life's assignment. You need power to become what witches said that you'll never be. All the witches are not in Africa or in some remote part of the world. There are witches right in the church. There are witches in the pews. Oh, I've encountered these witches before. I've seen them. They don't think I know them, but I know them when I see them. You can't hide from me. I got the Holy Ghost. I've been in the presence of witches and looking at them in the eyes and said, I wish a witch would. <laughs> oh, you don't understand. God's giving me power to tread. I'll tread over your head. You keep messing with me. I've had them come in this church and they couldn't stay. Oh, on two separate occasions recently. I had one guy come in here. He was he was a person. He was in the in the occult church, a more high ranking uh, demon person who was putting spells on folks. He walked right through these doors. They came and got me out of the office. I went and looked at him. I said, "What are you here for?" He said, "Something told me to come here." I said, "What you come here for?" He said, I came here for help. I said, what you come for help for? What you want? He said, I've been putting spells on folks. He said, I put, I put spells on people. And when I do it, their lives are messed up. I said, I tell you what, sir. I didn't even pray for him. I said, that power in you will not work again. He looked at me and said, so you telling me I'm not going to be able to put hexes on people no more? I said, no, you won't. I said, go try it and see what happens. I said, that power will never work again. I remember, I remember this. I was about 21 years old. 
I went to my, I was living in an apartment at the time, 21, 22, maybe 20, yeah, something like that. And I went home and I, I saw this white stuff in front of my porch. The Holy Ghost said, you had a visitor. And now I remember, I remember now where it was coming from. It was coming from a lady who had a daughter who wanted this girl to be my wife. I didn't know that at the time. And the Holy Ghost said, dance in it. I start dancing right in it. And as I was dancing, I was making this declaration, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. There are forces who have declared in the spirit realm, you will never be what God said you would be. But the devil is a liar. I'll say this right now. Every demonic spirit that has caused you not to rest is laid to rest right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I, when I said that, I just picked something up. Mm. Don't even try it. I said, don't even try it. You don't know who you're messing with. Hallelujah. Do you know I'm a child of the king? Do you know who backs me up? So I said, well, I wouldn't talk like that. You know, the devil is, you know, he got some power. I don't care. God got all power. And he gave me all that power over his power. You better know who you are. See, I'm telling the devil's going to cheat you out of your inheritance if you don't know what you got. Peter knew what he had. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I in the name of you. Get up. He didn't even pray for the boy. He just said, get up and walk because he knew he had something. That's the problem with the church today. We don't know what we got. We walking around begging for power when we got all the power we ever need. Lord, send your power. Lord, send your power. Oh, God, send. And you got power. Power's in you. Say, power's in me. Okay, let me move on. Let me share this with you. The power of God is desired by many but never experienced by many because there's a price to power. And I want to just talk about one of the conditions today. I want to talk about one. I'll just share one with you today. And, and over the next week or two, we're going to look at these conditions because they are conditions to the power of God. In other words, you've got to meet the requirements. God does not give power out to just anybody because power can make or break you. See, when you have power, but you don't have the ability to have a discipline and lifestyle, Okay, let me say it this way. If you have a gift, but you don't have the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, where you're cultivating a relationship with Him, where your relationship with Him means more to you than the gift or the power He's given you, then what happens is, instead of you using the gift, the gift will use you. See, the gifts and callings are without repentance, meaning God never takes them back. And just because somebody is operating in the power doesn't mean that God approves. That's the mistake some of you all making. You running around, amen, with the flaky folks thinking just because they have a gift and they got a little power flowing and they can do a little something, you think God is on their side. Many of them God's going to reject and he already has rejected. Yes. The Bible said in the last days, many, many will say, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? See, when you use his name, it's got to work. 
I don't care who uses his name. Paul says some preach the gospel out of pretense and out of insincerity. He said, but it don't matter. Just thank God the gospel is being preached. So whether they preaching it in the oh Lord, I wish I had somebody. Whether they preaching it for real or for fake, it doesn't matter. The gospel has been preached and lives are being changed because the gospel always works. But don't get it twisted. Everybody who operate in a gift don't mean that they are accepted by God. Hmm. So what are some of the conditions? The first one I'll share and the only one I'll share is total consecration. Now it's getting ready to get quiet. Yeah, it's getting ready to get quiet. Total consecration. Say total consecration. Turn to Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Oh, this is going to be so good as we dig into this. Because I'm telling you, somebody's about to encounter power. The power to bring change in every realm. I said the power that brings change in every realm. Whew. That's why the devil don't want you to come to a church like this. Because he knows that when you get here and get an understanding of this word and get a hold of this revelation, your life is going to change. And you're going to go out and become a, a changer. You're going to start changing others through the power of God is in you. Hallelujah. He don't want that. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. I just, I saw in the spirit, I don't even know, what's the term? I can't, like varicose veins. Somebody with the problems with their veins. I just saw that. I saw somebody's leg being healed of that in the name of Jesus. As I was looking down, I just saw an image in my spirit. And somebody who's been dealing with some type of um, circulation problems in their, in, in, with their circulation. God is doing something for somebody's circulation. God has just done something. I mean, I've seen God just get into the arteries and just get into the veins. And right now the blood is just getting ready to circulate right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every obstruction to the flow of your blood is being dissolved. Mm. Glory. Verse 24, I'm in Genesis chapter 32. Total consecration. That's a requirement. That's a condition. Look what the Bible says in, in verse number 20. What did I say? 24? Put 24 up there. Genesis 32, 24. And Jacob, and we'll read down through verse 28. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. I want you to notice the phrase, and Jacob was left alone. Whenever God is getting ready to introduce you to power, he always calls you out from the crowd. That's the first teaching point you got to catch. When God prepares you for power, he doesn't do it in a crowd. He doesn't do it around your, your posse. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Verse 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against them, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. Some of you have been crying over some things that seem like it's out of joint. Stuff just ain't working like it used to. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you, you're getting set up. And as he wrestled with him, next verse. He said, let me go, for the day breaketh. Well, that just left. That's okay. Let me find it in my Bible. Hallelujah. And he said this. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. He said, I ain't letting you go, except you bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thy power, 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 power with God and with men. God's not only giving you power with himself, but you're going to have power with men. Oh, glory be to God and has prevailed. How many of you see this? 
See, notice that there was consecration. He wrestled with God. He wrestled. With, see, when God is getting ready to move in your life with power, get ready for a wrestling. That's going to be a wrestling. What that's going to be? That's going to be a replacing of God's will for your will, your ambitions for his ambitions, your dreams for his dreams. See, God's got to God's got to wrestle with us because he's got to get all of the flesh out of the way. He's got to get all of our own selfish ambitions out of the way. See, you don't understand. Why is it that I feel like I'm in an internal battle and things are just raging on the inside? Because God said, I'm trying to work some things in you. And that because there's some things I'm getting ready to work through you. But I can't do it through you until I can do it in you. And I know right now it feels painful because when your bones are out of joint, that's pain, that hurts. And some of you are going through a season of hurt. You're going through a painful season right now. But the Lord sent me here today with a word and he told me to tell you, he said, I'm preparing you for something you hadn't seen yet. And when this is all over and done, if you can just hang in the match, baby, if you look at your neighbor and say, just stay in the fight, stay in the fight. If you can just stay in the fight, he said, when you come out of this, you're going to prevail with power. Psalms 24. Turn over there, please. Psalms 24. Oh, glory. Total consecration. This is the price for it. See, this is why so few walk in it, because they don't want to go through total con. They don't want to wrestle. They don't want the pain. They don't want things to be disjointed. They want everything about their life to be so pretty and perfect, and everything to be so pleasant and happy. Look what he says in verse number three. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? That's his presence, y'all. And who shall stand in his holy place? Glory to God. He that has clean hands. Say clean hands. Clean hands. And a pure heart who have not lifted up his soul into vanity nor sworn deceitfully. God said, if you're going to stand in my presence, there's got to be some holiness. There's got to be some consecration. The Bible says in verse 5, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. If you want to receive his blessings, he said you got to have clean hands and a pure heart. And you cannot lift up your soul. I wish I had time to teach those things under vanity and sworn deceitfully. No, ladies and gentlemen, you got to get all the deceit out of your life. All of the little fake, phony stuff. You got to just be real with God and say, Lord, you know my problems. You know my issues. Here I am. Lord, I got some issues right here. This is an issue. This is a problem. Quit trying to hide it and cover it up and just be honest with God and say, Lord, here I am. I'm naked and I'm not ashamed. Deal with this issue in me. Deal with this pride. Deal with this lust. Deal with it. Because I don't want nothing to stop the power from flowing. Whatever you're not willing to confront will never change until you let God confront you. Some of you don't want confrontation. Therefore, you never experience transformation. Oh, you get all offended and upset when correction comes from God or from the pastor or from the one over you. You get all upset and bent out of shape and walk around offended. Talking about, I can't believe that and I don't understand. And God said, you ain't ready. Just two more scriptures. Isaiah 59. Oh, glory. This is the price for it, y'all. This is the demand. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. God said, until you deal with your iniquities, until you deal with those things in your life, those little foxes, according to the Song of Solomon 2.15, that's spoiling the vine. It's the little things that you overlook and that you think ain't bad. It ain't nothing. It's just a little something. It's just a little, little something. Ain't nothing big. Ain't nothing major. Ain't nothing massive. Just a little, little something. He said, it's that little something that's keeping power from you. Somebody's just one little tweak away, one little change away, one little change away from a breakthrough in power. He said, if you can just give me that. Second Corinthians chapter six, second Corinthians total consecration. It's the price. It's the price. See, those who walk in purity will walk in power. I'll say it again. It's those who will walk in purity that will walk in power. God said, this power that I'm getting ready to release in the earth today is a power that will not be diluted with the flesh. It's pure. 
undiluted. Oh, I'm telling you, God's raising up a generation who's going to carry the real power of God. I just told by somebody, I was riding in their car, men and them were together, and I got out of the car, and they went and picked up somebody on the side of the road. The man stepped in the car in where I was sitting, and this is a sinner, he was a gang member, and said, I feel God in here. I feel God in here. And then me and this person, I was praying in the Holy Ghost in that car. No, we were worshiping in that car. Hallelujah. If it's a lie, they told it. I didn't ask. They come and told me about it. I didn't ask for the story. They told me. I said, I want you to know that a drug dealer, a gang member, got in my car, picked him up at the gas station. And as soon as he got in the car, he looked at me and said, I feel God in this car. I feel God in this car. I see you going about your day-to-day -day life, and when you encounter people, you will not just encounter them alone, but when they stand in your presence, they will stand in God's presence. From this day forward, people who get in your presence, they'll say, I feel God around me. But there has to be consecration. Look what he says in verse number 14. I'm in 2 Corinthians 6, last verse, and we're going to pray. He says this, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Oh, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and communion? What communion has light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part of, of uh, what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Then he says in verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you, you are the temple, not this building. This building is not the temple. You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Look at verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Notice he said, come ye out from among them. That's what you got to do. You got to come out. The apostles were separated from all else but God. Then the power fell in Acts chapter 2. They were separated. It was just them alone waiting. Total consecration means separation from every habit or lifestyle that keeps us out of God's presence. Total consecration means separation from every association or relationship that keeps us away from God. You need to examine your relationships. If those relationships are pulling you away from God, you need to cut them off. Any relationship that does not take you, if you hanging with folks and they're doing things, saying things, acting in ways that pull you away from God, that's not the right person you need to be connected with. You need to examine your relationships. Because your relationships are part of your consecration. Total consecration. Say total consecration. We'll deal more with it later. Did you get blessed today? Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. I'm connecting with people in this season that's taking me to God, that's pulling me into God, that's making me more hungry for God. I'm not hanging with folks just doling my hunger. Connell people that don't want nothing from God playing church you better get around a group of people that's hungry for God that's going to keep your fire burning hallelujah isn't that right you better get with some folks that's going to keep your fire burning hang with some people that's going to going to put put pressure on you to go to the next level they're going to they going to pressure you to stretch they're going to say, come on, you can do more than that. You can go higher than that. Amen. Don't you settle with people who, who endorse your mediocrity. 
people who always want to sympathize with you and say, it's all right, it's okay that you like that, it, it'll be all right, you know, God understands. No, you need to give with some folks and say, you know what, amen, I'm going to cover you. Yeah, it's all right, I'm going to love you through your mess, but you ain't going to stay there. You better get yourself together. Because I know there's more to you than what you're doing right here. Amen. Did you receive that word today? Amen. I want to pray quickly, real quick. 12, 1159, we're going home in five minutes. If you're here today and not born again, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm going to pray for you. Number two, if you're here and you say, I'm saved, I love the Lord, but I'm not walking with God the way that I should. And after this message today, I know that I need to make some changes and some adjustments and I want to recommit and rededicate my life to Christ. Third of all, you're here today and you say, listen, I don't have a church home. I want to be a part of this family. I believe God's leading me to be a part of you, Vanda Life Church. And amen, I want to unite with this family because I know that when I come here, I hear God's voice and it speaks to my destiny. And if God is leading you to do so, I want to open the doors of a church. And then lastly, if you're here and you desire prayer because you have sickness in your body, you're going through something financially or something relationally, something emotionally, and you need the power of God to, to make some things right for you because you can't change it on your own. You've tried, you've tried, you've tried to no avail, and you've been travailing, but now you're getting ready to start prevailing in life. Because one moment, one touch of God's power can make the difference in your life. So I have four invitations. Number one, if you're not saved. Number two, if you want to recommit your life to Christ. Number three, if you'd like to be a member and a partner with this church and ministry. And number four, maybe you desire prayer for any given area in your life, in your health, in your finances, in your family, wherever you need. The power of God is available for you. There's power in the name of Jesus to bring change in your life. So if any one of these things apply to you on the count of three, I want you to just throw your right hand in the air. One, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed. Two, Today is your day for change and breakthrough. Three, throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. I see your hand. I see hands over here. 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 Amen. Listen, you can put your hands down. Now listen, what, what you just did took a, a tremendous amount of courage. And we celebrate that. And we are so grateful that you had the courage to do that. But what I'm going to ask you to do now is going to require just a little more courage. Just a little more courage. But it's okay because I want to pray with you. And I want to pray with you intelligently. And I can't agree with you in prayer if I don't know what I'm agreeing with. So I'm going to ask you to do something. If you raise your hand, just raise your hand if this is you. If you raise your hand to be saved for the very first time. That you've never given your life to Christ before but today you're doing that for the first time raise your hand all right if you raise your hand because you're recommitting your life to Christ you are saved but you're making some adjustments and you're recommitting your life to Christ raise your hand all right I see those hands all right if you raise your hand because you want to be a member of this church raise your hand quickly all right I see your hand up okay anybody else? all right if you raise your hand because you have a special prayer need raise your hand all right so I see all of those hands so now I'm gonna ask those of you who raise your hand amen because you want to be a member of this church there's a young lady in the back right there in the back sister Helen you see her back there amen we want to say welcome to the family we're excited to have you and we are we are so glad that you chose to be a part of this family a family that's gonna love you that's gonna be there for you that's gonna help you and a family that you can count on my wife and I along with this entire church family we're here for you and we are excited for you being a part of this church and we do not take your presence for granted here at Abundant Life, your presence is celebrated, not tolerated. Amen? And we thank God for you. I want you to see her immediately after service. She's going to take you to the back, to the side, and, and you'll fill out a new member's card. She'll tell you about our new member's class. It's, it's online. It's through Zoom. All that good stuff. Again, thank you for being here. Now, if you had a special prayer need, I want you to stand to your feet. Every person with a special prayer need, just stand. Just stand. There you go. Thank you for standing. Now, those of you <clears throat> who have made a decision to recommit your life to Christ, you stand now. You stand, all right? I see you standing. I see you standing. Now, here's what I want you to do. For those who are rededicating their life to Christ, I want everybody on, the benefit, on behalf of those who are standing to do this, I want you to repeat these words after me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, today, thank you for your love, for your goodness, and for your mercy. Your word says that whosoever come unto you, you will in no wise cast aside thank you today for receiving me today I make the choice to realign my life with your plans and your purposes thank you for your forgiveness thank you for your acceptance today I'm a child of God by your grace I will serve you 
more effectively than I've ever had in all my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a praise for that. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. Now, every person that's standing right now, come to the altar quickly. If you're coming for special prayer, just come to the altar right now. Just come on. Just come quickly. Come quickly. Come on. Give them a hand as they come. Give them a hand as they come. Give them a hand as they come. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Give them a hand, y'all. Come on. Give them a hand. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for them. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33. He says, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you didn't know. You can call unto God right now and he's going to answer you. He's going to answer you. Now, I want you to know this. If you're here today because you need healing, anybody here because they need healing in their bodies? Look at this. Okay. Now, I want to believe God for you. I want to believe God for you. I know time is of the essence here, but... Y'all don't mind if I take a few more moments to pray? All right. Because I believe in the power of God. God's power is going to touch you today. Hallelujah. The power of God is getting ready to touch you today. Now, I want to come down here and I'm going to just talk to a few of you real quick. And I want to pray for you right here. I want everybody to start praying in the spirit. Go ahead and just pray right in your seats.
and it is so. Now listen, every person right now, whatever pain is in your life, whatever's going on in your health, I want you to put your hand on, tell me something. Now, one of the things the Lord has taught me very, I've learned this. You pray while that anointing is on you. So I'm getting ready to pray because I feel it on me, but I feel it lifted too. So I can't come by to everybody, but it's not me anyway, it's him. But I'm going to pray right now, whatever you're going through, whatever's going on in your body, whatever's going on in your life, I'm going to speak the word of God over you. In the name of Jesus. It is not by my might, it is not by my power, but it's by your spirit. Father, I decree and declare right now, healing will flow into every sick body. I rebuke the spirits of infirmities. I command healing to flow. Let there be peace in relationships and homes. I speak financial miracles over your people. Lord, I decree that you will turn things around in families. I thank you that doors will open that no man can close. New doors of opportunity. I don't know who this lady is right here that's praying in the Holy Ghost. But this lady in the black, the Lord said a fresh anointing. I got a, it's coming on her life. And, and the Lord said she's getting ready to move from one level of glory to another. And when I lay my hands upon this lady, God said you will experience a change in every facet of your life. In Jesus' name, the power of the Lord come on you. The power of the Lord come on you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And Father, we give you thanks. Somebody who's been dealing with migraine headaches, the Lord has just healed you. Somebody who's been dealing with blurred vision, God has just healed you. Cataracts has been healed. Glaucoma's been healed. There is a very um, rare eye disease. I just keep picking this up with the eyes. Very rare eye disease somebody was recently diagnosed with. The Lord has just healed your eyes. Double vision has been cleared up. God is moving in the eyes. In the name of Jesus. Pressure behind the eyes has been healed. And there is a person, there is a person who was dealing with dizziness. There's something type like vertigo or something. The Lord has just healed you in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of depression. I rebuke the spirit of depression. I command that spirit of depression to go. There's inner healing taking place, emotional healing. I speak to that person who's been suffering 
from a heart, and it's not physical now, hear what the Holy Ghost is saying, from a heart condition, meaning your heart's been broken, your heart's been wounded, spirit of, I, ta, ta, da, ba, I saw, I see who it is, that the healing power of God is moving right now for that person, the Lord is healing you emotionally, there's a person right here, right around me right now, God is healing you emotionally. God is healing your emotions, the broken places in your spirit where you've been wounded and betrayed. The Lord is healing you. And I even hear you saying, I'll never trust again. I'll never trust again. The devil is a liar. God is bringing wholeness to you in the name of Jesus. And it is so. And to God be all the praise. As you go back to your seats, know that the power of God is released to you right now. Power is being released to you. And let me just say something to that person here too. There's some things that's been held up. I see somebody, you've got some things held up in the court system. The Lord said it's, it's been unfrozen now. It's been released in Jesus' name. I'm releasing it now. I'm releasing it now. Watch what the Lord will do. Go in peace. Go in peace. Hallelujah. God is good. To God be the praise. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Minister Delisha, come up, please. Come quickly. I want you to dismiss us. Hallelujah. Don't forget about some uh, tonight's healing service. Tonight's healing service. Listen, bring some people with you tonight that's sick. Bring some people with you tonight that needs a miracle. How many of you got some people that you know that's sick in their body? That need God to touch their lives, suffering from depression, bound by drugs. People that need a change in their life. Come tonight at 7. It's not going to be a long service. I've got a message I'll share for about 25 minutes of that. And then I'm going to minister. I'm going to see these Sunday night services. Is designed to minister the power of God to you. It's not so much a teaching service or worship service in the sense of a lot of singing. It's about the demonstration of the power of God. God said we are called to demonstrate the gospel. The Lord has healed you. Inwardly. And I'm going to tell you something. Things are getting ready to look up for you. Hmm. The power for change is on your life. But come out tonight at 7 o'clock. It's going to be powerful. I'm telling you, God is going to do something supernatural in your life. Tonight at 7 o'clock. Join us tonight at 7. Amen. The women's meeting, don't forget about it. It's going to be good. Lady K. Amen. The movie night. That's June the 2nd at 7.30. But you can come at 6.30. Fellowship. Amen. All right, Minister Delicia. Amen. Can we all stand as we get ready to exit this place? Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence, Father. We thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the word, Father, that will cause us to prosper, Father, and to advance, Father. We give you thanksgiving for the testimonies that will come out of this time, Father. We thank you, God, that your word will produce evidence in every area of our lives, Father. We thank you for your messenger, Father. We thank you, God, that he has poured out upon us, Father. So we ask you to pour back into him to restore his strength, Father, in your presence. And we'll forever give your name the glory and the honor. We decree and declare divine protection over your people. Hallelujah, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.